previously on Dogla Politics. Show me a liar and I'll show you a thief. And he said, I never told the Prime Minister or the Cabinet to shut down Petrotrin. The decision of the DPP has come under attack by members of this government because the government didn't like the decision. The Prime Minister and head of the Cabinet. In 2013, his greatest moment was, e was his email gate section 34. Rowley's attorney general then withdrew the appeal, put up the indemnity day. This man is calling this. So Wednesday night, 7.30 p.m., Rowley, log on again. The second half of the Rowley Thon, the pathological, insane, mad rant of a man who's desperate, a man who does anything and says anything to stay in power to procure without procurement. It's all about you, Rowley, the worst prime minister in the history of Trinidad and Tobago. Dogla politics, 7.30 p.m. Log on early, don't miss a note. Dogla politics. Good evening and welcome to Dogla Politics. Unbelievable. I thought I could have gotten it, gotten through everything of Rowley press conference in one Dogla Politics, an hour and a half. I feel, boy, Vishnu. But tonight, let me tell you something. The man spoke, Keith Christopher Rowley spoke for an hour and 48 minutes. Now, Keith Rowley will never put God out his thoughts to debate Anil to debate the dogla so i have to do it this way because he's a bully he will get up in his press conference and tell the media this is my press conference you have to talk to me and if you don't ask questions how he like he don't take you on or he buff you or shout down at you and let you pelt you out and all this kind of thing because he's a numbskull and a bully and what he's doing standing there and lying through his teeth i already showed and told you the most deadly and dangerous lie because there's criminal prosecution that is required by independent institutions the police the dpp have to do their work in this nelson gate that rowley is trying to play like it's something frivolous and it's just politics and old talk no it is not nelson gate is a very critical issue it shows the interference with a witness witness tampering by the government by the state by the attorney general by the cabinet by the prime minister leading to payments to a person inducements to give a statement to bear false witness all of this an indemnity signed by a government before a man says anything then after he has all his 11 promises all his goodies all his millions all his agreements all that the government wants to give him he then goes to say and bear witness on other people without any check cash lease no other evidence whatsoever just his word just what he say no bank account no money transfer no land nothing else and rowley comes to the population and says that the man was convicted he come to the court and he was convicted and charged by the dpp and taken to the magistrate's court and convicted and then his government got involved no the man was there by himself waiting for your money that was due to him and the pnm squeezed his cajones the man was sick with cancer needed treatment and they kept his money then they withdraw the appeal then they settle and all of the settlement check went and then he come with the notarized statement and the indemnity was signed before a word was stated before one accusation or one statement was made that is a very serious very dangerous situation and it involves the attorney general appointed by rowley it involves rowley as the head of the cabinet and it involves the entire cabinet as i told you because the amount of money that was paid it needed cabinet approval and none of them can escape that but you notice Rowley lies since last week 
Rowley Lai, since last week. Where the great journalists? Where the evidence? The mic was done. Where Robin you head for? Ah, oh, well, I apologize. We weren't on Facebook. Sorry. Um, we had a little technical difficulties. Humbly apologize. Don't worry. I'm still warming up. I just summing up from the last show. So you didn't miss anything yet. We humbly apologize. Sorry for that. Alan Karim, share the Facebook, share the Facebook, share the live. Archie on. Right. We good to go. But it is a very serious thing. Witness tampering, perverting the course of justice inducement bribery misbehavior in public office all of these things and rowley frivolously talking and lying and not one journalist say but so no no honorable prime minister the faris 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 thing wasn't after look we have the indemnity here it was before you said that the, you, your attorney general signed that if you were to say anything we would then talk to the DPP to see that you don't get charged. Not a journalist, not a newspaper, not an editor, not a columnist, not a Transparency International, nobody, not a retired judge, not a law association, nobody comes out and says, Prime Minister, you are a liar. What you have said there is not the truth. And in fact, the factual matrix and the evidence presented by the indemnity itself shows that you are culpable and an investigation is warranted at the highest level. But this didn't, didn't happen now. It's, a, it's several months since Kamala bust that indemnity. Where the police, where the anti-corruption bureau, where the DPP office, where the investigation, where the commissioner of police, where the newspapers, there were four editorials, Guardian, Express, and Newsday. Express even said, I read out on Dogla Politics, that this requires action from the independent offices because criminal conduct is apparent. But they just drop a football. If they were playing American football, Express, Newsday, Guardian, TV6, CNC3, they lost every game because once they catch the PNM, they fumble the football. And you all sit down there and think that that media is something to be respected. Our media has been bought by the PNM. And Samakal boasts about 6.5 billion in revenue. I'm glad for them. But you know how and why they get that? Because PNM is good for Ansa Makal. Guardian Media Limited, CNC3, Morning Brew, Balise Juice, their editorial position keeps the PNM in power and Ansar Makal makes great profits. i happy for them. But the rest of the country who is not PNM suffering, closing down, unemployment, lo losses, overdraft. When you woke up today, your entire day was a nightmare. Now to all the children who took the SEA, congratulations, relax, enjoy your holidays, don't discuss it. Don't worry about what you did, what you didn't do. That will see about itself. Parents, school all yourself. Let the children enjoy themselves. Take them to play some football, fly a kite, ride a bike, run, swim, do something. But since you woke up today, you woke up and you're in traffic. You're listening to the radio. You look off the road for a second, boom, you're in a pothole. Crime, you open your business, you get some of you all get robbed this morning. Schools, children going in maxi, going to school, fight. Girls fighting, mash up. Think, peep some of y'all, no job. Don't know where you're getting money to buy. You wanted to go and buy something? Your $100 finish fast, fast, fast as you're walking the grocery. Why do you think things are so bad in Trinidad and Tobago? It's not by guess. And they always like to say, well, the whole world bad. We live in Trinidad and Tobago. And the whole world for the last 12 months has been rebounding food prices have been going down gas prices and oil prices are going down but not in trinidad and tobago why because we have keith christopher rowley a prime minister is the most powerful position of executive government in the world the prime minister in a westminster system has more power than the president of the united states 
the prime minister that is Keith Christopher Rowley controls every aspect of your life because the government in Trinidad and Tobago is the number one spender the number one employer the number one money making money spender in the economy injecting money where they want and when you have a man who does not care and tells you the people give me your resources give me your taxes give me your money give me extra taxes let me tax you and take more from you and let me tell you to wean yourself off your tax dollars so that we could go and build building and give Noel Garcia to build airport and central block and health center and sports stadium and every house and fix a fancy building and buy art and fix golf course and fix bill administration building for the health system that you can't get a panadol in. That's when you get a man who has no heart who has no character, a low-level individual, an intellectual bank, intellectually bankrupt human being who has no care for anything other than himself because he himself has a chip on his shoulder and over the years not being confident in himself, now you give that kind of human being power, they wield it with a kind of venom and a kind of pain that hurts even their own. Many of you listening here are PNM till they're dead and you know exactly exactly what i'm talking about y'all are pnm till they're dead and in their heart you're saying rowling must go this is the worst government in history i know what you're saying and it is true because the man who you gave the most power to is a heartless man who does not care about anybody any man who can receive a report on children being abused and put it in a drawer for 15 months and do nothing and leave the children to get abused that man, something is wrong with him. And you give that man power, and you know what that man does? He takes more power. Because the Constitution, even though it's written, it never envisaged that a man like Rowley will become Prime Minister. It never envisaged that a woman like Kangaloo, and don't say I say it because I'm a woman, but you're a woman. A, a, a human being like Kangaloo who's so lowly qualified, no exceptional education, no exceptional achievement, nothing to cheer about will be sitting in president's house. Imagine that. And then claiming that people are bad talk to you because she's a woman. No. It's because she's a dance. Eh? Wikipedia not say you're a dance. Everything you do is PNM, 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 PNM. Look, Kamala is a leader. You know, Emmy said, Kamala, top chica class in law. Ta Kamala was a professor. Kamala was a teacher. Kamala, senior counsel. Kamala, prime minister. Kamala, attorney general. Kamala, leader of the opposition. Kamala, beat Bastille Pandey. That is woman. That is achievement. Kangaloo, what you do? And to that man, Mr. Kangaloo, you really say you want to mentor men? Mr. Man, slow your roll. Eh? Because there was a man who, a sweet red man, had to beat at a chambers when he knocked on the door. And a certain man opened the door bareback. And a young lady, just, just fresh with baby's milk out of you, within law school a year or two had tears in her eyes and looked very stressed so stressed that the red man hit the bareback man who was in the office with the young girl hit him a cough flush in the face and hit him a kick in the belly before the bareback man got up run up abercrombie street bareback turn right on park street run east and turn down, head south on Pembroke Street before he escaped. They said our man should teach Usain Bolt how to run. The speed with which he ran from that cocktail after getting cuffed straight in the face after a line at Morvino for the law firm. And at that line, this fellow who wants to mentor men, tracking a young girl, somehow get her back in the office. And whatever took place, the sweet red man saw it and he saw the tears and he didn't like it. Let me ask you something, boss. If a man just cuff you in your face and kick you, hit you, assault you, beat you, that you had to run bareback through town 
how come you didn't press charges and you a lawyer if you lied if you had nothing to hide and you just there doing work way back in the office you know you're reading some briefs you're doing something and a man just open you open my door a man just cuff you you wouldn't call police you wouldn't make a report show Arnold show the dog the report where you make when the man beat you why you didn't make the report and if you want a mentor man go and mentor Rowley because you and Rowley is about the same thing because Rowley was a teacher who used his power position his position of trust to get the confidence and to groom a girl of school age into having sexual intercourse with him and he impregnated her so we don't want that kind of mentorship okay mr man mr lawyer if i don't lie hear what to do send me a pre-action protocol letter one time let me discuss it in the court okay and i go call witness and thing and we can put it let me let me ventilate the issue in the court send me you are me mr kangalu send me a pre-action protocol say a lie say a lie you get caught straight in your face why what you doing there what you doing bare back in the night day with a young attorney just out there she crying that the sweet red man hit your cough straight in your face and you run down the road bare back you feel it don't have cctv camera footage eh send me my pre-action protocol you don't mentor no young boy please we don't want that kind of mama pool kind of young men we want real men all right we don't want no mama pool mentor you stay right there mr kangaloo okay boy all your men mad why you didn't hush your mouth boy you have to be a madman you come into mentor who from Marvino to the chambers to running bareback getting a cocktail running up abercrombie across park street and down pembroke but we never know short man could have run so fast we are witness and all who, who call this week man hey boy sweet man what are you doing yes so you come let me let me let me um discuss it in the court bring it mentor boy sit down there and hush your mouth now all your pnm don't take over everything your family have everything from minister of education to noel garcia spending everything to presidency to the next one to judge to this to case ev everything trinidad and tobago belong to all you fire upon you you want a mentor mentor who to tell our boys that they have to go and lick bamsi in balize house to get something or when we when we loving up girls and they crying that's a good thing all the girl i ever had they never cry they might might have a care might have come in the eye if you're performing very very good but you don't know a woman don't cry but frightened snotty nose if if they're in in the in, in enthralled with your prowess that's why the red man beat you in tongue so you watch him out let me get back to rowley and let me forget mr kangaloo rowley went on you know actually he said he had no intention to impact the work of the dpp rowley said he has no intention he respect independent offices and he had no intention to impact the work of the dpp not rowley no you feel i lie run it archie today i want to tell the population that nothing is further from the truth. There is no action of the government, no intention of the government to interfere with the DPP's work in his office. So all those who are speculating that what you have seen is something to do with the government and whoever else wanting to get rid of the DPP, we have no interest in that, except we want to know that the office of the, DP, the DPP, the job is going on the way it ought to go on, and that the DPP can rely, whoever is in that, whoever is in that office, can rely on 110% support from the government of Trinidad and Tobago, where the cabinet is involved, to contribute to that work. That's what the history will show. 110%? Since 2014, you came in in 2015, the experts had said that the, the, the HR outfitting, the structure, the org structure of the DPP office required 150 attorneys. Where's the funding since then, 2016, 2017, up to now? None. What percentage? You talk about a building? 
And then furthermore, you, Rowley, saying you have no interest in impacting the work of the DPP. You just want to make sure the DPP is working properly. What does that mean from you? Because when we read this document, Archie, this document here, this indemnity, this shows that Keith Christopher Rowley and his government, through the Attorney General Faris al Rawi, is right here interfering like never before in the work of the DPP because the criminal prosecution is the sole responsibility of the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions. So this entire document that is signed by the Attorney General of the PNM, Faris al Rawi, approved by the Prime Minister, Keith Rowley, and the Cabinet, and all of the promises that were kept including payments of millions of dollars there it is signed in november 2017 the honorable attorney general that document is evidence of the pnm and rowley's government interfering in the operations of the dpp interfering witness tampering inducing and bribing a witness to give witness in a criminal matter which the government and the executive and the cabinet has no place doing but he stands up there with a straight face this pathologically evil obia man and tells you that his government has no interest in interfering in the workings of the office of the dpp well Archie, let us go further. Because quite some time ago, Rudal Munilal came out and told you that Keith Christopher Rowley, and he was supported by the then Commissioner of Police, Gary Griffith, to say that Keith Rowley and the Cabinet of Trinidad and Tobago had approved special funding for some attorneys from the UK that were taking instructions from the government of Trinidad and Tobago, from Rowley's Cabinet, to investigate opposition former ministers and members of the UNC, including Munilal and myself. We called her SRP Kate. But SRP Kate, after 40 million, 50 million, 60 million, could not find anything on the ministers. And Rowley kept going. So that is not the DPP. Rowley is trying to impact and investigate and take taxpayers money on a witch hunt to try and do the job of the police and the dpp but he stands there and tells you he have no interest in that really rowley so what is this cabinet note here then this cabinet note of your government you are the chairman trinidad and tobago police service goods and service in light of the sensitive nature and urgency in the matter the honorable prime minister on July 24, 2020, agreed to the proposal at paragraph 1. The Minister of National Security recommends that the Cabinet agree to ratify the approval. Now, what does that mean? That Keith Christopher Rowley himself, remember I told you that a Prime Minister can give Cabinet approval. A Prime Minister on his own or her own can give approval, just like what Rowley did in the Bridgman's crooked money he gave prime ministerial approval and then you go back to cabinet for covering approval to get the paperwork done so here it shows that keith christopher rowley of his own approved and gave the approval of cabinet for the grant of covering approval for the engagement of english law firms edmunds marshall mcmahon limited open text uk limited Pricewaterhouse Coopers services for professional services provided to the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service, right? For the engagement of these people, that the Ministry of National Security will TTPS in consultation with the Ministry of Finance identify funds to meet the expenditure related to the activities outlined, estimated in the sum of fifty million TT dollars. Keep going up. This is Rowley. Rowley approved that to try and witch hunt UNC members. Ratification of approval, right? You're going back to front. 
right oh this is the start that was the end that's what what, uh, what was decided from the time to time the commissioner of police is provided with secret and classified information to security through criminal and corrupt activities based on some of this information the ttps are engaged in numerous investigative cases of high profile nature right and they will be handled by a neutral competent body devoid of influence from a society as such the cops sought the engagement of the legal luminaries and had the cops sought it but rowley approve it and pay for it the expenditure incurred the government of trinidad and tobago the ministry of national security in consultation and so on 50 million dollars 16 million plus 50 million 66 million dollars come back and what happened rowley because you are so pathological you think that if you and your pnm repeat a thousand lies or one lie a thousand times you begin to believe it there is a very big problem with that when it goes further you can believe it you can talk it you can read it email gate you can repeat it you could come live spot live spot live spot you could come embd you could come over and over and lie and talk about this land and devaluation you could talk all of that but there's one little problem there's something called the judiciary and the judiciary even though it appears that the pnm has some control over certain parts of the judiciary you still have to present evidence and when you go in the court you have to get the police have to get evidence evidence is factually based so lies and nonsense cannot become evidence so no matter how much money you fling at your lies rowley you cannot find evidence to make your lies become truth you pathological idiot wasting 66 million spend take our next 600 million now. the people are so fed up of you the people across the board contractors are not being paid children are not getting funding sportsmen and sportswomen are suffering the sports the, the, the hockey can't even play hockey on a turf they waste 3.5 million dollars there's no sporting activity parents have to dip in their pocket to pay for the children to go and represent the country and you studying to spend taxpayer money to hung down people on your lies you see when you start on a platform of lies you are standing on air you will fall through because gravity exists science is gravity but he is saying that he has no desire to interfere with the work of the DPP and there you see the indemnity interfering with the work of the DPP hiring srpk and foreign lawyers that are hung down unc and can't get nothing is interfering in the work of the dpp and the police he interfered in the appointment of a commissioner of police by going to president's house and whispering to paula may weeks and getting blissy facade to misbehave in public office break the law all three of them together broke the law to ensure that a merit list was thwarted that is interfering in the work of the police and the dpp but he come there to light all the media say okay yes sir really next one and now he confesses let's let's listen to this confession play archie one of the issues we dealt with as players would have it was knowing that that office of the dpp has the constraints of getting the quality of staff that you require to prosecute. You, you can't pick up people off the street and put them in the DPP office. Good lawyers are already in their private practice and not going to come and work for the government's pittance. Out of law school, hot and sweaty behind the ears, you're not good enough to go and carry up care on no case. So the bulk of the DPP's work in the court and matters, especially major matters, will have to be done by certain experienced lawyers. And what do we do? We sat down and we discussed that maybe the time has come for us to look outside of Trinidad and Tobago to bring in whether it's six or eight or ten or twelve lawyers to put them in the DPP office where they will arrive with the necessary experience. And because I know how these things go, I instructed the Attorney General as after we agreed that this is a direction that we should go. I said, but take no action until you have spoken to the DPP. This was about a week or two before all of this became public. 
and the government stands ready. I even advise him, and I think he had done something on that already, talk to the Commonwealth Secretariat and ask them, indicate to them our intention to look in the Commonwealth for people who can come and contract and support our DPP office. That's what the AG was working at. We go into the confession, but that one it shows his continued desire to impact. He wants his attorney general, Lima, who does lie on affidavit in the United Kingdom. Lima, who does lost file and cost the people 20 million. Lima, who in one year cost the taxpayers 64 million. Lima, the worst attorney general, most corrupt, ridiculous, dishonest attorney general ever. Keith Sobian and all of them. Rolling in the grave, those who held our office before. Rowley is discussing, he wants his attorney general to go and find more foreign lawyers other than the ones SRP Kate and think that he then approve. Not cabinet, you know. He, Rowley himself, gave prime ministerial approval to get people to for him to give instructions on who to go after, where to go after, what to look at, and how hard to look. And all of that money waste because they didn't realize the client, the man in charge, was a pathological liar called Keith Christopher Rowley. And that's his problem. Because when you go in the court, lies don't stand up. You need evidence. You need paperwork. You need something. Now, Archie, listen to this carefully, this next clip, people. You have to listen very carefully. Stop talking to whoever next year. Listen to this and see what got past the journalists who sitting down there. Run it. As Prime Minister, as leader of the PNM, I have nobody whose interests I am to protect that will cause me to be afraid of the office of the DPP. That problem lies with the leader of the UNC. Because every time they see a motor car passing with a blue light flashing or they hear somebody say good morning and knock on the door, they think it's the police. We don't have that problem in the PLM. And what they're trying to do is to prevent the government from going after white collar crime. They believe that if they create enough manima, make enough allegations, that the government will back away from what we are engaged in, which is the commitment to pursue white-collar crime in Trinidad and Tobago. I can tell you this evening, the government remains unshaken. We will continue where there's evidence, where there's ba a basis for investigation, we will investigate. Really, Rowley? You the government? Where is basis for investigation? You will investigate. Read a book. Read political science. Read separation of powers. Your job as executive is not to investigate anything. They have independent institutions to do that. You have an independent commissioner of police. Supposed to have an independent Trinidad and Tobago police service. An independent DPP's office. You, you all hear Rowdy say that his government will investigate and they will continue to investigate and they will pursue investigation. Hey, that is not his job. The first tenet of investigation is you must not have any case to grind or acts to grind. You must not because power investigation must find truth. Justice must be blind and balanced and you must search for fact and then fact must be put before the law and then those who are guilty will pay this man this miscreant this political partisan numbskull just confessed to the whole country that he investigated and his government investigated and they will continue so to do to pursue investigation that in itself coupled with the indemnity signed by his government his cabinet the money approved by his cabinet, his government, to pay and to bribe and to uh, incentivize our potential witness in a criminal matter is illegal and is witness tampering. A 
criminal act perverting the course of justice misbehavior in public office all criminal acts and he talking about unc when they see up blue lights the unc what about camille and she won 46 143 000. what about cummings and the two account venture credit union and the, pro and the production orders that were served and venture credit union taking money from mts rowley girl who released it and it end up in foster cummings account where that investigation what about the land with foster cummings what about the investigation into Faris two Porsche? What about the investigations into Rowley and your Ines Gate and your Integrity in Public Life Act forms that you did not fill out? What about the investigation into Rowley's actions on August 12, 2021, when he went to President's house and, and made Paula Mayweeks a public official, misbehaving public office and, and ignore Section 123.4 of the Constitution and allowed Blissy Passat to withdraw a list that she could not that was approved by the majority of the police service commission what about the investigations into that you don't like special branch you talking about unc yeah. but that the prime minister of trinidad and tobago especially when his the post is held by me but in the constitution it is also the Prime Minister of Trinidad and Tobago has no involvement and no role in the prosecution of any person in this country. So those who are asking where is the Prime Minister in the matter to do with the DPP's action and the Vincent Nelson matter, the Prime Minister of Trinidad and Tobago has nothing to do with the prosecutional processes against any person in this country. So stop asking for me. And as for the cabinet, we're not running a parlor, you know. We are running a cabinet. And matters come to the cabinet in a particular way. What matter has to come to the cabinet for the cabinet to determine if a person has a deal to turn state witness? What the hell does that do to the cabinet? That is a matter for the state's legal department, fully staffed by lawyers headed by an attorney general, the DPP, and the courts. So why is the UNC, and I want to say to the media too, why are you all asking, you, you, you know something else? But you see when Mrs. Postal starts her stupidness, the echo chamber is the media. Instead of asking, what, what, what does the cabinet have to do with that? What does the prime minister have to do with that? Well, we know you love Faris, right? But I'm saying that it's time we get serious on serious business. And of course, you know the big thing? You know, the, some lawyer, some lawyer, a senior counsel from the United Kingdom, come to the Trinidad court, present evidence that what he did, plead guilty, was convicted, was fined $2.2 million, agreed to turn state witness to talk about his friend who involved. But the opposition leader's big point yesterday is that he, that gentleman, is claiming $150 million of in damages, of course, yes. I'm sorry, he could have claimed 200. I want you to understand that every word out of that man's mouth, while he's carrying on like this and that and this and that, is an absolute total lie. Think about it, you know, look left at your husband or your wife, your children. Look at the normal people around you. And understand that what you just saw, every word out of that man's mouth was a lie. He knew he was lying. He was lying with passion. Pretending to be talking. Think about how sick that man has to be. Put up the indemnity, you know. Put back up the indemnity. This is an indemnity agreement. 
negotiated, signed, and delivered by his cabinet, his attorney general, including payments in excess of 20 to 30 million dollars, which require, hear what you say, the cabinet have a process, you know. We're not running a parlor. Exactly. And the cabinet has to approve any payment above a million dollars. A permanent secretary cannot release or get released from the Ministry of Finance and do a check with any worth whatsoever if they do, unless they want to end up in jail for above a million dollars, the $999,000 limit. So the cabinet, he's saying, what that have to do with the cabinet? Look at this. This entire document. Go to the signature, please, Archie. Show the people this negotiation, this document signed on behalf of the government, signed on behalf of the cabinet, signed on behalf of the state, signed on behalf of the prime minister by his attorney general, Faris Al-Rawi, that is what we are talking about. You see, when the Dogla talk, when the UNC talk, when Kamla talk, we provide evidence. Not just get up there and talk and talk. The man is so sick. But you see, he's convinced himself. He lies so much that he believed that. He believed that nonsense. Understand that? Total fabrication. Total lies. He said no PNM has issues with the cabinet, with the police. What about Inez Gate Police Service Com Com Commission? The Nelson Gate, Camille Cash, Force Declaration, Foster, Paris, Limo. Right? Let me go to 5029. Nelson volunteer. No, we did that already. Um, let me skip down to 5316 to 5345. Anybody would bring that for me. Right? It, Rowley talking about if anybody bring any everything for he. Listen to this. It's just lie after lie. The amount. I only reached minute 5316. You have that one, Archie? Right. Um. The, anybody that would bring that for me, you had that, eh? Press play. Let me go. We go find it. There's nobody in my cabinet that has issues with the criminal department of the state. None. There was one issue raised about Marlene from the Manning government. It was raised and raised and raised. And of course, Marlene was removed from the cabinet. Uh -huh. As I say, Marlene, and what about all the others? What about the Cummings? What about the Camille? What about you? What about Faris and the Porsche? What about Faris and Nelson Gate? What about Miss Beaver in public office? What about you and Blissy Passard and, and the president? What about you and not filling out your integrity in public life act form? Why you like to lie so much? Next one. Mm -hmm stretch it until it becomes a hair's breadth to the president's office that the new president has been put in office to grant nelson what well, um pardon pardon just stretching the lies from one level to another to another to another and she does not care who she tarnishes in the process even the presidency even before it was one day old, talking about person going to the, to the office. That is what they will do. But back the indemnity day, let me check something. He said that Kamala just concocted that the PNM president, that they will approach the president. Go back up slowly, let me see. Right, go up, go up. Let me read somewhere there we saw it, you know. All right, we looking, we looking. And he noticed. I will take my time, we go find it.
The notarized statement by my mom keep going. The notarized statement will be disclosed to the director about no civil proceedings against you by the government of Trinidad and Tobago. All of this, you know, this is Rowley's government. The attorney general undertakes to recommend to the DPP who has the power to determine whether criminal proceedings can or will be commenced against you. That in respect of any matters arising on the notarized statement and no criminal proceedings will be commenced. The government of Trinidad and Tobago on behalf of itself, its servant and our agents, hereby agrees to indemnify you, to keep you fully in effectually indemnified at all times, to keep you fully and effectually indemnified from and against all actions, suits, proceedings, claims. Keep going. Go up to six. Right? Next page. Right, go up, go up six. Let me read it, yes? Because all this is Rowley's government. Go down a little bit so I can read six. You can go, right. Any notice, demand, or communication given to us under the indemnity shall be in writing and shall be deemed to be duly served if left at or sent by registered first class mail, right? Or if sent by fax. We agree that any notice, demand, or communication shall be in writing and shall be deemed to be given if sent, registered, first class, received by another party at the moment of dispatch. Demands or communications made or given fax or delivery. The moment of dispatch, place of the notice, demand, and so on. No delay or omission on your part in exercising any right, power, privilege, or remedy in respect of this indemnity shall impair such right, power, privilege, or remedy to be construed as a waiver of it. Nor shall any single or partial exercise any such right, power, privilege, or remedy preclude any other exercise of it in the exercise of the right. The right, powers, privileges, and remedies provided in the indemnity are cumulative and not exclusive of any rights, powers, privileges, or remedies provided by law. This indemnity shall be governed by and construed in accordance with the laws of Trinidad and Tobago and all disputes arising from or relating to this undertaking shall be subject to the jurisdiction of the courts. Further to this indemnity, in the lawsuit and the 36-page letter, Nelson wrote that the government pro promised to give him to not only withdraw and, and uh, 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 effect a pardon from the president, Nelson, their witness, their negotiator, he said that, come back, uh, um, Archie. So this man stands up there and talking about bringing, how Kamala bring Kangaloo, his mini-me, his recruit, his PNM president, his president of the Senate that thwarted the opposition at every moment, the worst president of the Senate in history, would total bias all others had given the opposition opportunity to talk because they were outweighed with power and numbers so the government will have their way but the opposition normally had its say but not with kangaloo and bridget and he said george they are pure bali say whereas but the main man nelson who rowley called queen's council no ordinary man he wrote that they promised him a presidential pardon also. And this Rowley stands up there talking. Next video. We go in and go in first. Halfway through already. But to come and be talking about Nelson. As though Nelson is some hero in Trinidad. Because I want to tell the opposition leader. Vincent Nelson yes. is no hero in this. I want to ask you all in front of me here, members of the media, and those of you listening to me. You think anybody, any of them, anybody could have come to me and tell me that they want me to go to the parliament and pass a law with a clause that would give them an escape hatch from the court? You think anybody in this country could have put God out their thoughts and come and put that to me? Far less to have it acted upon? Find that one cover, yes, Archie. You have that day, but wait. <laughs> Archie, I feel you have to play over that, you know. Listen to this, this, uh, the, I can't even, I'll add a loss for words. This is the man who came to the media and said, but yes, that is my friend. If, if you're hearing things about that, about, about this and that, I will call my friend. I mean, if, if, if you're a friend, I will call you. When the audit from the PNM minister Oliveri and the PNM board of Petrotrin did an audit, 
and realize that the quantum of oil being claimed and the thin voices being made were unimaginably impossible to to they could not fathom that that amount could come out they did three different orders and they said that is wrong up to now they have not completed that investigation because rowley's cabinet refused to give the police mo money to pay an expert to quantify an expert chemical engineer whoever could quantify the amounts and go and do a scientific study and give you exactly how much could come out in how much time and so on rowley refused to give money for that by giving srp kate and think to run down money lad and run down on it but rowley say but when that happened that minister oliveri the woman who caused the audit fired by rowley petrochin board fired by rowley Petrochin shut down so no evidence could be gathered. But Rowley then put his own personal lawyer in charge of Heritage Petroleum. Court case gone to arbitration. Case flop. Deborah Peak, senior counsel, said, No, 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 no. We must appeal that against Rowley friend. Rowley's personal attorney said, No, no, no. We are taking on Deborah Peak, senior counsel. We go in and look for junior counsel advice. They ignore Deborah Peak. They do not appeal. They just appeal everything else. Down to a little child getting money for some sort of thing. They just appeal all kind of thing. They appeal Rowley friend. The settlement then happened with the government, which is Rowley, to his friend, 118 million plus a new 10 year contract. And Rowley say, You think you could bring that to me? To me? And I could do something? Rowley is the man take Ken Julian out of court when the government under Kamala had them in court to get back 31 million that Ken Julian invested in Bamboo Networks when Christine Sahadio, the PNM minister in the Ministry of Finance, had written him and instructed him not to do so because they did their due diligence. Rowley take him out of court. Then there was Malcolm Jones. Kamala had Malcolm Jones in court for 97 million pounds, above a billion dollars, and then more to come because of the world GTL fiasco that caused 13 billion dollars in losses and debt of the taxpayers and the people of Trinidad and Tobago. You know what Rowley did? Small pin was Malcolm Jones' lawyer before he became Rowley email gate lawyer and representative and before he became Rowley's number one recusal twin and Rowley's K-Pax liquor and bag carrier and business negotiator for ferries and, and procurement. Rowley withdraw the case. His government announced that they were withdrawing the case. And you know who Rowley got to give a piece of advice to the PNM? Nelson. Nelson. Nelson was a Queen's Council hired and paid to give advice on that Malcolm Jones issue by the Kamala government. He wrote a detailed opinion showing the strengths of that case and the government should go forward that the possibility and probability of success was great when rowley come in on email gate lies and gerrymandering an extra one hour in the election at the ebc tell the pnm but not the unc when rowley squeak through the first thing rowley do is take malcolm jones out of court take him out of court so that he would not have to face the responsibility and pay the price for his actions. Rowley standing up there talking about, you think you could bring that to me? Let me tell you something. All you remind yourself, listen to what the law lords out there who don't know nothing about PNM, UNC, Rowley, Rowley lies, Bali Sejus, who just work on facts, information, documentation. Listen to what them said about this Rowley man and Trinidad and Tobago. Run it. Oh, you didn't have a lineup, don't worry, you go find it. You have it. Yeah, you take your time. But that man Rowley talking about that. All the boys he pulled out of court when he did not put in a defense against Ashton Ford, former PNM mayor and former general secretary of the PNM, and another PNM man who get 2.5 or 7.5 million dollars cumulatively. What was that about? He didn't defend the taxpayers' money. 
when they don't put in defenses for cases and people have to pay mi millions and millions of dollars. Press play, man, let me hear. But doesn't he go a bit further than that? I mean, isn't he saying, uh, this is all rather extraordinary? Uh, there was a pr two pretty confident opinions from senior counsel that the case should be brought against Mr. Jones. It was. In September, there was a change of government. In October, Mr. Jones was appointed to the Standing Committee. Within days, there was a whisper in the uh, papers that it might, the uh, case against him might be dropped. Within 10 days of that, Mr. Nelson is writing a very short opinion. And he's, after all, dealing with one, well, withdrawal of a $97 million claim, Mr. Rowe, saying that uh, he thinks it's, there's a reasonable likelihood of failure. Um, and uh, in all those, uh, and then it's withdrawn and discontinued, and all the costs have to be paid. Um, isn't that the basis for saying we must please see the basis upon which Mr. Nelson cast his pessimism, which led to discontinuance? Well, my lord, it depends upon what one is. What, what one is concerned with, the, the way it's put by, uh, by the appellant in his affidavit is, well, there are, uh, it's necessary to allay suspicions, but to, to put it bluntly, as we, we do put it bluntly in our case, bluntly the suspicion is that there's been some sort of political um, interference in all of this, such that for purely political reasons, the new government has decided, irrespective of the merits of the case, that it ought to be dropped. Mr. Rowe, well, two days before this opinion was written, was a Minister of Communication for the new government saying that the case against Mr. Jones was heading for dismissal? There, there's reference to that. May I just pick up the reference to that? Yes, yeah, certainly. Um, give me a sec. I don't think it's two days before that. I think it's actually uh, a little longer before that, my lord. The advice from Mr. Nelson is dated the 11th of October. Yes, I've got the Minister of Communications down as the 9th, but oh, no, you're quite I, I may well be no, wrong. No, no, you're quite right. It is, it is the... Uh, so what was the government, why was the government floating uh, possible dismissal in advance of receiving this advice? Right, and it went on and on. That was Nelson, that was the first introduction of how pliable Nelson was. So Rowley and al Rawi knew that he was pliable after detailed evident opinion on the success that caused the case to go forward he just gave a little paragraph to the pnm and then the pnm withdraw the case rowley talking about you think you could bring that to me rowley take malcolm jones out of court rowley take ken julian out of court rowley ensure fake oil just disappears and his friend all yet really serious and many many more We then move into the arrogance of Rowley. Listen to how this man, as a prime minister, talks to a reporter. Run it. Guardian Media. Fortunately, I don't have. Guardian Media. You read that? I don't have any apology for you today, but I do have some questions. Yeah, let me hear them. Right. So you said in Barataria that you were responding to the DPP's uh, interview on I-95 with with facts. Now, you you don't often talk about the DPP's business in public. So when you do, we take notice. But my question to you was a public political platform, a forum known for, for Pekong allegations and as you said statements, was that the best place to address that issue given the nature of the DPP's office? That is my decision it, and always will be. What I say where I say it is my decision. I don't see if I'm talking to citizens and broadcasting it live to everybody. Because those meetings are carried live to every citizen, home and abroad. There's no special place. It must depend on the issue. We had in front of us in the country an issue where it was said by no lesser person than the DPP that the criminal justice system is about to collapse. And if you believe that as Prime Minister of this country, hearing that statement in the public domain, and the Prime Minister will just ignore it because I'm sure you would have been the one to come to ask me the question if I didn't hear what was said by the DPP. Understand? That is what I responded to. A situation where it was in the public domain put there by authority that the criminal justice system is about to collapse. And why? Because of matters to do with accommodation, 
and staffing and so on. As I pointed out to you earlier on, I confined myself to the accommodation, which is where the cabinet had a rule. So don't come and tell me that there's a special place to raise particular matters. There was no reason why it couldn't have been raised there. As a matter of fact, when we speak at this PNM forum, we speak in front of the whole country. Listen to the arrogance, the disgusting disrespect. Anybody would know that on an issue like that, discussion should be held in camera. But that's his attitude. He doesn't care about the Constitution, Trinidad and Tobago, the separation of powers and how our democracy works if it's strong. All he cares about is trying to defend himself. But even in that is lying because the staffing of the DPP's office is a responsibility of the cabinet because of the money. Not the selection of lawyers and so on, but the allocation must be made so that lawyers can be hired through the JLSC and fill in putting gaps. You cannot just have lawyers, hey, you want a job? Go, go, go. And no money to pay their salary, their perks, and so on. So he's, it's nonsense. He has been starving the DPP's office, the Integrity Commission, the Children's Authority, and many other institutions of funding so that Noel Garcia could build building. And he can go and take pick care in pretty building for X amount of millions of dollars. Play the next one, Archie. Did respond to your statements in Barataria by saying, it seems to me that a response is called for and accordingly I am seeking the advice of people wiser than I am. Have you spoken to the DPP? That is, that, is, that is the DPP. I mean, I don't speak for the DPP. And I'm not going to engage you on that. Have I have not. No, no, no. I don't normally speak to the DPP because as a matter of fact, Contrary to what you hear the former Prime Minister, Mr. Kamala Prasad, Mr. saying about the DPP, I, I have kept my distance very far from offices that are deemed to be independent, right? Because I know if you hear me talking to the DPP in a restaurant or, or in his office, or if you see me going to his office, that would make news for a month. <laughs> He does stay far away from offices that are supposed to be independent and the police service commission and the poli commissioner police and the DPP office and signing indemnity and president's house and the uh, independent, independent senators and the integrity commission and the mass media and uh, put up the pyramid now. Put up the pyramid. This man, if you all could really vote for that man, something is wrong with each and every one of us. Forget politics, you know. That man just stand up there and say he, Keith Christopher Rowley, stays far from offices that are deemed to be independent. He stayed far from the EBC, yeah? He appointed Narcissus Scope, the niece of Maxi Coffee, a former minister in his cabinet, and the best friends of his deputy minister bundles from St. Augustine Gills, the RIC, independent. <laughs> The bursaries from scholarship, they turned to bursaries so the PNM could choose who could get that. Look, the PNM president, his recruit, Kangalu. The archbishop and all, supposed to be independent, apolitical. He jumping into the fray to, to say everything Rowley said, like he just go for tea and scones by Rowley. The mass media, the chief justice, just so jump out on Rowley's side to attack the DPP. The commissioner of police who following them and singing from since they moved Gary and thwarted the merit list. The full was the last one named DCP Jacob, DCP Dunce, and now Paul Ola, she only praying. Integrity Commission, independent senators, them voting for legalized thiefing, them voting for revenue authority for the PNM to go in your taxes, them voting for anything for property tax, anything to do with the PNM, them voting straight. Go and check the track record. Don't take my word for it. Things that go against the people of Trinidad and Tobago. You hear any one of them independent senators talk up about RIC and TNTEC rates and saying do not raise rates. The people can't say it. Who them independent senators representing? 
Not one has come out and say, but PNM only have to be mad. Do not raise rates. Not one of them going in a um, RIC consultation and say, but wait, you're using 2015 CSO data. People are suffering in 2022, 2023 more than ever. You don't hear that? What about the PNM permanent secretaries? That's why them just get charged. Because the PNM permanent secretaries just cut, make shortcut for them. What about Transparency Institute? What I'm doing? You can't hear it. The president get a PNM big work on sport company. Now Jamaica High Commissioner. Now the Transparency Internet. They have nothing to say about indemnity. Police Service Commission. Meritless. NGC. Corruption. Wasting money. Lack of procurement. Procurement gutted. Procurement year regulator contract up five years and it ain't proclaimed the gutted law. You ain't hear nothing from transparency. Transparency turned to whispering institute. Chambers of Commerce, Police Service Commission, PNM Revenue Authority coming, PNM Procurement Regulator, PNM Normalization Committee in football. All of that Rowley come and interfering and controlling and Rowley stand up there with a straight face. Archie. They saw it. I can't take too much of his face, you know. Go to the next one. Show the arrogance, the, the ignorance. Later. Can we find out what happened in that meeting? I, I, I can't answer that because I'm not the AG. If you want, you could talk to the AG about that sometime, and I'm sure he'll be happy to talk to you along the way. Not now. You will have your own meeting to do that. No, 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 no. This is my meeting. This is my press conference. You have to talk to me, right? Because what has been said and the lies that have been published there were aimed at the office of the Prime Minister to tarnish the country's behavior in the international eye. That's what I'm dealing with today. That what he dealing with today in his press a post-cabinet press conference of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago by the Prime Minister who is the employee of the people. That is who all you have and then wonder why every one of you out there, whether you're voting PNM or not, is suffering while he and his recusal twins lining up to take picture in front of fancy building that ugly face Noel Garcia bill related to President PNM Kangalu. Next one, hear this now. The, the, the link is still being um, rented on a month to month basis. Um, still rented to whom? Well, I mean, to, to be used to, by to the government. But that's, that, that is why I raised it that day when I raised it because we, had a, we have a situation. We rented the building for three years for a particular purpose, right? There's a government department called Press D. Right? That does that handles all government rentals and negotiations with landlords and so on. The three year has expired and the purpose for which the building was rented has not been um, it has not been utilized for that purpose. The building is still held on a month to month. So the government now has a decision to make. If the DPP does not go into the building, the government has a decision to make. And I think you, you, you would like to know that. What do we do? We, we spent millions outfitting the building, not just the renter. Eh? You outfit the building for use as a public, as, a, as an office to suit. The, the contract is up. The landlord could walk away now and say, thank you very much. I mean, thank you for the millions. I go and mine chicken in the building. I don't know. That man, his cabinet, his government took a decision, signed a lease agreement, paid $45 million of your money for absolutely nothing, and comes there with arrogance to pretend like he did nothing wrong. No government should sign a lease with a building for any purpose until it is deemed that that is fit for purpose. So what should have taken place before an idiotic cabinet run by a lunatic who only sees money and then comes to you, I have wasted, given away to my friend and financier 45 million. Oh gosh, what to do boy? Skip, give him more money or stop it. We spent, we didn't use it for three. We paid 45 million dollars for nothing. That's what he said there. With arrogance. I don't know how you do that. But what should have taken place, logical people of Trinidad and Tobago? 
it's a building the DPP needs a building what are the requirements for a DPP building the very serious just like police stations are very serious police stations you have to have reinforced walls you have to have jail you have to have this you have to have um, evidence room to hold gun and cocaine and think very secure you have to you, you have to have specs so what are the specs required for an office of the DPP okay this building is here what are the specs what is missing all right that 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 you own the building you going to do that or you want us to do it well if we going to do it we need six months to do it so we are paying no rent for six months if we going to do something excuse me like that has to be done in full consultation with the dpp so that when the building is ready the dpp can move in but government faris al rawi and rowley and his cabinet run to rent a building from one of the finances a big boy quick 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 and then go to the dpp local building and special branch say but well you have to be mad you can't put these people up uh, going to deal with some highly murderous criminal matters with gang and killers and murderers and evil people you what are you all talking about there's not no regular thing there's not no library that should have been done first his incompetent government didn't do none of that they rushed the pay quick and then come to you hey well we pay 45 million dollars we ain't getting nothing just like they said 233 million in ngc we ain't getting nothing even though they told us nothing about how much they spent since then we don't know plus they spent the next 215 ngc for something oh gosh we don't need that but them nothing wrong with them they're not incompetent them is not thief but then reattate reattate you ask some very good questions reattate but when I was watching this part of the press conference, Archie, I made a bet to myself with myself that the questions that Ria Tate asked here, which were the most pertinent, the most important, the most insightful, and the most damning, I bet myself that not one word of this part of the press conference will make it into the express newspaper archie do you think i won look at the smile on my face i won hands down not one word of what you're going to see now made it into the express newspaper and i put it to you that in the press conference this was one of the most pertinent pieces of inquiry that brought out information that shows the incompetence the irresponsibility the neglect and the ridiculous waste of the pnm of taxpayers money and our express news editor asked the question political editor ask the question rowley answers creating story and information for the people and the express air printed run it when the building was selected by public administration did the dpp signal um an objection or uh, attached conditions and at what point did the special branch concern emerge was it after you all entered into this rental contract or, or did it come after? I don't have those fine details in front of me except to say at every step of the way we were at the level of the cabinet aware that one the building was deemed suitable for the purpose and it was on that basis after it was declared by Presley for that purpose that you would have entered into a contract with the landlord subsequent to that we heard of issues to do with security because someone went and looked at the security aspect and certain recommendations were made those recommendations required interventions those interventions were made and all along the cabinet is expecting that this problem is solved then we're hearing it is not solved because there are other problems and the final problem was the one where it came to the question of a construction on the building of a wall 
and we had to wait to hear what the engineering would have said to the landlord and what the landlord said to the us, the tenant, and in the end the landlord said no. And is that, that, just happened to, that just happened to have come up the very said week that all of this bacchanal started. The, the landlord's position came in writing, it must have been a few days before. Yeah, late, February. late February. The landlord took a position that what we were, what was being recommended to be done on the building, which some people think was unnecessary, some think was necessary. But the bottom line is, even if we want to do that, the landlord said no permission is granted for that. So that created a situation where the government must now decide what do we do, right? But, but as a matter of government policy, do you think the, the security assessment should have been done before the decision was taken to rent the building? Well, let's put it this way. The department in the government that does government rentals would have taken that on board. But then there's security and there's security and there's other security. Right? What does that mean? Well, it means that security means different things to different people. Because security doesn't only mean that I move around this country as prime minister. My security is always important to me and the state. And the officers who look after me, they don't just look after me here in the office. Because security requires, so if somebody wants to hurt you, they can hurt you anyway. So um, what I'm saying, this matter is a matter which required a decision. And the decision maker was the cabinet, which got a building, which up to that point of his rental, part and pass muster. And then if they come back and say, look, we, do, we need to do so and so with the building, cabinet never stood in the way of that. That's why so much time had passed, because we had to do certain things to bring it to a certain standard according to security arrangements. But then, if you get to the point where it is said that no further improvements can be made, and I, I mean, hindsight, you could say, well, maybe we should have done all of this before, but this was never, um, this was never the, the, the overriding consideration. This, some of this is new. Also, as a matter of government policy, do you think it is wise to invest like $45 million in a building that the government itself doesn't own? Well, you see, rental can, is, is something like that. If you, if you, the government has requirements now for a lot of space to conduct public service. The government doesn't own enough buildings to put all those people in. So over time, the government will rent and also add building stock. So, but if you rent, you have to pay a market rate. Nobody's going to give you their building for free. They're going to give you that market rate. So a building like that, which, as I said, there is an executive office, high standard, high quality building. It used to be the head office of a bank, right? And that building would carry a certain, um, you know, the, the, the rental is not going to be cheap. I think it's six hundred thousand dollars a month you pay in there, and it is a building which was deemed to be suitable at a point in time. And the whole question of its suitability, I am not a security expert, but of course the taxpayer who pays the bill ought to be aware of how this thing happened and why it happened. Do you see? Ria Tate, well done Ria Tate. Brilliant, intelligent questions, but not a word printed like about that in your newspaper. Because in that interchange, that exchange there, you heard a bumbling, fumbling prime minister talking about if, in hindsight, if they should have known to get a building and to understand the security. It's an office of a DPP, a DPP. It don't take rocket science to know that that needs specific help. But they have security means something to somebody and somebody. The abject total lies and nonsense. And then he talking about these things, uh, $45 million. Why you didn't do all that before? You rushed to sign the lease for your friend, executive office. The DPP office, number one requirement is not for executive office. It's to be safe so they wouldn't dead. And that files that they have will be secure and fireproof 
and fire a ball. You can't bomb the place and shoot the But what madness you talking? And not one word of that printed. And then Rowley, this is what he does. He talks about the, 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 the cabinet. He's not an expert. The cabinet is supposed to get expert information before approving $45 million for something that cannot be used. But this is how the PNM does. They go and they change designs that the Kamala Prasad Bissessor government had for the Mosquito Creek. And they spend $250 million and the thing match up and crack is in Mosquito Crack. Skinner Park. They go on and do all oh, 131 million with Noel Garcia. Oh God, spend money and take a World Cup qualifying World Cup FIFA football pitch. And now we can't even pitch marbles on the field because they don't think the Diego Martin interchange. It stopped, it shut down for the last eight, nine, ten months because the design they had require four lane roundabout which means they don't have enough space they will have to take land from the international school and from super farm they're now trying to design a new drawing to move it back inside where the park and thing is to see if they could do some kind of concoction this is the incompetence of the pnm but they're not losing their money they're losing your money and then they have a prime minister who stands up there talking nonsense Abject total showing his incompetence, his lack of suitability to lead, his lack of insight, his lack of understanding, his crane nature for only yeah boy rental millions. Oh god, my boy have a building. That's what they do the rush inside there. You had no discussion with the DPP. The offices for the DPP. The DPP will know and they'll have experts who will know what is required. They go on to sign lease with the cabinet, pay 45 million, and they're still paying month to month. So each month, they boy could get a little thing, even though the building not fit for purpose. And then he come and throw shade on the office of the DPP when his government is the most incompetent thing we have ever seen. Next clip. I've seen it said that the office needs 150 lawyers. Come on, if you advertise tomorrow for 150 lawyers fit for the DPP office, to persecute criminal matters, what do you think you're going to get? And if you do get them, what quality are you going to get? So, but you can, if you, if you look at a wider pool of people, you can, hopefully, we are expecting, even people who are retired from, or recently retired people, might be available for a year or two on contract to bring the quality of service that DPP needs immediately. Because we talk about training, we talk about staff development and so on, those things take time in an office that is, has a huge t t turnover of staff. So these are all, but I didn't go into those matters at all, and I don't want to be seen to be going, I left those where they belong, in the judiciary. And I focus myself on where the cabinet had a role to play, because I'm sure... I hundred and fifty lawyers since 2014 systems were being put in place you came in to, as Prime Minister in 2015 eight years ago and you have not hired any in fact more have gone than been hired you come in now eight years later to talk like this problem just fall in your lap and the cabinet has a responsibility because the cabinet has to release the funds, make the allocation, budget for the office of the DPP. So if the budget of the DPP office is X amount of million, 200 million per year, it needs to go up to 400, 500 million if they are going to hire the number of lawyers that they short. Simple maths. The only institution that can approve that and give allocation is the cabinet of the republic of trinidad and tobago your pnm cabinet you keep lying and saying you only talking about what the cabinet have to do the cabinet must allocate the money next one i hope that the dpp is sufficiently intelligent to let all that nonsense bounce off his ears and ignore the supporters of criminal conduct in this country. I find it very strange indeed that the majority of people who came out in this contrived way, the DDP is under attack, so let's go and defend him from the Prime Minister. 
most of them have criminal problems with the DPP office. And I call that attempting to curry favor with the DPP. Because if you know your name in a file in front of the DPP, but you're out front fabricating stories about his imminent demise, you're trying to curry favor. And that goes for the opposition leader and all of them. Right? Hoping that, you know, as a buying company? No. We in the PNM, we in the government of Trinidad Tobago, we are not playing favorites and we're not out of fear. The DPP is going to do his job without fear or favor, facilitated by what the cabinet can do. So you, Rowley, you know who name in any file? How anybody can know about who name in what file with the DPP? The only person name in, who, in a file for the DPP was your name would land it. And somebody in the Integrity Commission give you an ease up. And the police have not reopened that investigation since 1998. So you stay there. What about your name in the file for your Integrity and Public Life Act? form that you did not declare your benefit on your Inez Gate property or the declaration that you signed that was false saying that the value of the property was 1.2 million when it's really 1.68 million when you paid 33,600 in stamp duty. Who are the DPP? What about the DPP office? Your name there? With the Police Service Commission fiasco? With Bliss Seepersad breaching the law and misbehaving in public office? On whose advice did she do that? To withdraw the meritless without the support of the majority of the Police Service Commission. How you know about who name and file? And it's only the opposition who came out and said that your attack on the DPP was unwarranted, was inappropriate, it lacked decorum, it lacked uh, diplomacy, it lacked any sort of form of leadership class and attention to democracy and separation of powers. You, it was only Kamla. So all the people who spoke out, as you say there in your press conference, all the people who criticize your attack on the DPP, your attorney general's attack on the DPP, and the chief justice's attack on the DPP, all of them, according to you, have filed the name in a file by the DPP. So Israel Khan, I didn't know. Israel Khan Rowley saying you, you, you have, you're, you're criminal. You have a your, your name in a file by the DPP, Israel Khan? What about Hamid Ghani? Or Sophia Choate? Sophia Choate Law Association found it totally appropriate and called for mature heads to prevail for discussions indoors in camera. It's her, this learned attorney. Her name, Rowley, her name is in a file by the DPP. You blooming idiot, Keith Christopher Rowley. You could just talk nonsense and cast aspersions on people. Many people criticize your actions because it is totally wrong, uncalled for, uncouth, and untoward. Hamid Ghani, Omlala, Avery Sinanan. Look, Omlala, Avery Sinanan, senior counsel. Rowley, his name in a file by the DPP. Rowley, you must be have a whole cupboard by the DPP. With you alone, Martin Daly. I don't like he, but he, I, I don't think his name in any file by any DPP. He might be a PNM, might write nonsense in his columns, but he's never been accused of anything criminal. But Raul, he said that it's inappropriate. Your attack on the DPP, Hamid Ghani, Professor Hamid Ghani, Umlala, the Express, the Guardian, the News, they, all of them. All them editorial, all them newspaper, them have filed at the DPP also, Rowley. Ah, really? Hmm. Interesting, eh? Imagine Rowley talking about fabric. No, I can't make this up. I not make run it, Archie. Yeah. So these are these are the realities. But what I, what I really don't want to happen in the country is for us to go down the road of fabricated anger. Let us, let us be reasonable. This country has too many schools, too many universities for people who should not be guiding the narrative to be able to throw out that kind of, you know, stories that are fabricated for whatever reason, and that becomes the national narrative. <laughs> you know, I have to laugh because if I don't laugh, I will cry at my people who I love. 
anybody who ever will vote for that again you all have to check it's a serious that man <laughs> i do i'm not even going into any analysis on that all you should know that that man is the biggest fabricator pathological liar known in parliamentary uh, westminster system to ever send to any office including that of leader of the opposition and prime minister that man run the next one i was on my way to the parliament because this was a report of a matter that was ventilated live on television with lawyers for all people across his army and coleman put the document of his final position to the court. when i got to the parliament with it i was not able to lay it in the parliament because i received advice from the dpp telling me in writing that i should not lay it in the parliament because to do so would interfere with the criminal proceedings that he was pursuing now as a responsible prime minister if i get that advice or that heads up from the dpp there was nothing stopping me as Prime Minister, I'm laying it in the Parliament. Because I don't know of any law that says that I cannot lay it in the Parliament. If as Prime Minister, I think it should be laid. But as a responsible Prime Minister, getting that heads up from the Director of Public Prosecution, I took that an advisement and did not lay the report in the Parliament. That question was about the Coleman report into Clico. And what he was discussing there was back in 2016 when he said he got the report and he was going to lay it in Parliament. And he got a call from the DPP to say, please do not lay it in Parliament because you will impact the investigation and the process that we would be, we will have to undertake here if there are criminal charges to be laid and so on. And Rowley said, as a responsible Prime Minister, I took that advice to not impact on any investigation and so on that I would not lay that report of the Commission of Inquiry into Clico and CL Financial in the Parliament. But this is the same Rowley, same Prime Minister who went and hired some private citizens to do an investigation into an FUL report and running down all over the country, hounding down people on a witch hunt, down attacking everybody and men getting of the charging people and now case collapsing at Usain Bolt speed. This is the same Rowley who wanted to lay in Parliament a report that he concocted from his National Security Council with some private citizens going to do something to tell he as politicians and he wanted to lay and Gary Griffith had to go to court and the court said boy you have to be mad you cannot lay that day you cannot utter it public you cannot say it give the police that let the police do whatever so that come like if you go by the reporter say officer a man jump me wall this morning say officer right give me address give me a thing and make a report so the court basically say that rowley you must get out to the police let them do it you are then you cannot do it you could gather information how much you want but give it to the relevant authorities to investigate but rowley knew that he should not lay it in parliament Rowley knew he just tell all you that he had learned that lesson since 2016 yet he came in 2022-23 to come and put things in parliament spend your taxpayers money to defend case against Gary Griffith appeal case spend over eight million dollars when he knew that he should not do it you see how he does lie when you lie so much you just forget what you say he sell out himself and contradict himself to show that he is pathological, he is dishonest, because he knew in 2016 that to lay any sort of thing that there, even an official commission of inquiry report, far less for a thing for a national security council, politician to politician, hire friend to do something. He knew the ills of laying that, the damage that could be caused, and yet he was intent on doing that because he is an evil, wicked, nasty human being. And in the Evening Express spoke about it. Daily Express, Thursday, 16 March, editorial, clarity on an explosive issue. Without prejudice to any future lead legal action in this matter, we can acknowledge the painstaking deliberation in the case. 
In a nutshell, Justice Rampersad affirmed the right of the National Security Council as a creature of the executive to make inquiries in respect to matters that touch and concern general issue of national security. He found no fault with the NSC's mandate to a committee established to conduct the inquiry, information, information gathering, reporting. That is not investigation. That is not laying charges. That is left for the official bodies who are deemed with that power so to do. So it is a rebuke of Rowley and his stupidness. And Rowley knew he was doing nonsense because he just told you all in his press conference that he had learned that lesson and as a responsible prime minister he did not lay the report but wait 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 archie i missed something boy i missed something that coleman report rowley gallerine and trying to play and play innuendo that the dpp didn't act and so on and so forth but rowley spoke a bit a bit too much you know he spoke Run, run it, Archie. Run it. It's from 122 to 122.35. What about Faris? But wait, wait, wait. Yes, run that, man. At that time, I was Prime Minister. It didn't start under me. When I became Prime Minister, the Coleman report was outstanding. Then Coleman put his report in to the Prime Minister of Trinidad and Tobago. I took that report to the Cabinet inform the cabinet that we have this report. The cabinet did not adjudicate on the report its content. The cabinet cleared that the report be laid in parliament and that the DPP, and I think the AG office as well, it was sent to the DPP because it was a, it was a, a report that had criminal repercussions. So I sent it to the DPP expecting he has a copy and i think if my memory serves me right a copy went to the attorney general's office again i wouldn't say i think so but wait peter wait cecil wrote by the gate who was the attorney general in 2016 not faris al rawi was Faris Al Rawi also on the CIB board during that Clico CL financial debacle and that became part of the inquiry into CL financial and Clico and CIB and the actions is a major part of that entire imbroglio? So you are saying, Rowley, that you took the Coleman report that you are claiming that you are saying now to throw. To throw shade on the DPP that no charges have been laid yet. And you gave it to the Attorney General, Faris al Rawi, who could be a subject of something in that Coleman report because he was on the CIB board. Rowley, you should hold your next cabinet meeting in Golden Grove. To each and every citizen of Trinidad and Tobago. Stand firm. Stand up. This thing cannot continue. I have taken three hours to analyze the pathology of that man who calls himself a prime minister. But only he can call himself prime minister. Because enough of us dip our fingers for that. You, Some of you PNM till you dead are suffering like never before. This is not a PNM thing. This man is pure evil. This man is an Obia man. He is a self proclaimed Obia man who work Obia on Patrick Manning. Nothing in this country works well because he is sick beyond redemption. So when it comes time to vote in any kind of election, get rid of this get rid of the pnm because the country is in a mess and when you are afraid of independent institutions it means that you are there for wrongdoing if you want to impact the office of the president the ebc the integrity commission the police service commission the commissioner of police the police the special branch the dpp office the chief justice you want to control all of these things it's because you intend to do wrong this is wrong we need to get it right join and unite good night